All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. The headlines. Home Minister Amit Shah directs fast track construction of roads and fencing in border areas. Enforcement Directorate attaches assets worth over 11 crore rupees of Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram and others in INX media money laundering case. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to address Army Commanders Conference today. Research and Innovation Initiative Gathering Conference of G20 to begin at Dharmashala in Himachal Pradesh today. Death toll from clashes in Sudan source 285. India sets up control room to assist its citizens in view of the current situation. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 14 runs at the Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium in Hyderabad. Union Home Minister Amit Shah is directed to fast track construction of fencing and roads in border areas. He presided over Chintan Shivir or a brainstorming session of senior officers of the Ministry of Home Affairs in New Delhi yesterday. The objective of the Chintan Shivir was to review the work of the ministry and to evolve action plan to implement Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision 2047. The Home Minister emphasized on developing ecosystem for cyber crime management, modernization of police forces, increased use of IT in criminal justice system, land border management and coastal security issues. He said that enhanced use of artificial intelligence should be made to utilize the crime and criminal tracking network and systems, CCTNS database, for critical analysis of crimes. Mr. Shah also stressed on the need to fast-track the recruitment process. He said that meetings of departmental promotion committees should be held regularly so that employees get timely promotions. He also emphasized on taking various welfare measures for central armed police forces personnel like creating healthcare facilities and improving housing satisfaction ratio. Mr. Shah stressed the importance of training, adding that regular training should be conducted by all wings of the Home Ministry. Mr. Shah suggested that Home Ministry officials should make field visits to monitor development schemes. The Enforcement Directorate has attached assets worth over 11 crore rupees of Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram and others in the INX media money laundering case. These movable and immovable properties are located in Kurg district in Karnataka. The action has been taken under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The case is related to alleged irregularities in the Foreign Investment Promotion Board clearance to INX Media Group for receiving overseas funds during the UPA rule. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will address the ongoing first edition of the Biannual Army Commanders Conference today. The Minister will also review an equipment display focusing on niche technology, innovation solutions for surveillance, artificial intelligence, training, robotics, virtual reality, advancement on Agnipath scheme and operational logistics. The Chief of Defence Staff, the Chief of the Naval Staff and the Chief of the Air Staff also scheduled to address the conference. This is the first time the conference has been conducted in a hybrid format, exploring available technology for secure communication. The five-day conference, which began on Monday, will continue until the 21st of this month. Tomorrow is the last day for filing of nominations for Karnataka Assembly elections. Chief Minister Basavaraj Bummai will file his additional nomination papers from Shiggaon seat today. BJP National President J.P. Nadda and Kannada film star Sudeep will accompany him along with several BJP leaders from the state. Senior Congress leader and former Chief Minister Siddharamaya will file his nomination from Baruna seat. More from a correspondent. A large number of nominations are expected to be filed today and tomorrow for the assembly election in the state. BJP has issued a list of 49 candidates who will file nominations today. Candidates of BJP, Congress and other parties are holding road shows and public meetings before filing nominations. Candidates of other parties including AAP, BSP, CPIM, have also filed nominations. So far, 2033 nominations have been filed in the state, which include 157 women candidates. With Sudindra, this is Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Bengaluru. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on a Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. 
The Research and Innovation Initiative Gathering Conference of G20 will begin at Dharmashala in Himachal Pradesh today. Delegates from G20 member states, international organizations and experts from the scientific community will attend the two-day conference. It will discuss building a sustainable eco-innovative energy conversion system. Secretary Department of Science and Technology Dr. Srivari Chandra Shekhar will chair the conference. The main theme of the conference is research and innovation for an egalitarian society. A correspondent reports that 60 delegates from G20 countries reached Dharmashala yesterday for the conference. They were accorded a traditional welcome at Kangra Airport. In Telangana, representatives from the G20's second meeting of the Digital Economy Working Group visited IIT Hyderabad yesterday. They saw India's path-breaking projects and cutting-edge research in 5G, Internet of Things, IoT, 6G system prototype, autonomous navigation, AI-powered RNA, electronic test kit. 5G and 6G products are expected to be used, useful particularly in countries that cannot afford the cost of fiber network, all lay fibers in remote areas. All India Radio is presenting a vignette of select quotes of the Prime Minister from Ban Ki Baat as the program completes its 100th episode in April this year. Today, let's listen to the 71st episode of this special program in which the Prime Minister appealed to students to stay connected with their alma mater through alumni. People, voice and direct dialogue. That's your and our Ban Ki Baat. Yes. This is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. Let us recollect the words of the Prime Minister in this episode, where he tells the students to stay connected with their alumni and the institutions. An alumni network is a network of people who have graduated from a particular school, college or university. Alumni networks can be a valuable resource for both current and former students. For current students, alumni networks can provide mentorship and guidance. For former students, alumni networks can provide a way to stay connected to the school and other alumni. In the Man Ki Baat program broadcast on 29th November 2020, the Prime Minister called upon the students to stay connected to their alma mater and each other through the alumni as they provide valuable resources and opportunities. I would like to say that the whole students who have studied in the same world will be able to keep their bonding more and school, ho, college or university. मेरा संस्थानों से भी आग्रह है कि एल्युमिनाई एंगेजमेंट के नए और इनोवेटिव तरीकों पर काम करें क्रिएटिव प्लेटफॉर्म्स डेवलप करें ताकि एल्युमिनाई की सक्रिय भागीदारी हो सके बड़े कॉलेज और यूनिवर्सिटीज नहीं हमारे गांवों के स्कूल्स का भी स्ट्रांग वाइब्रेंट एक्टिव एल्युमिनाई नेटवर्क हो Labor and Employment Ministry has asked all states and union territories to ensure preparedness and effective management of impact of ensuing heat wave conditions on workers and laborers working in different sectors. In a letter addressed to all Chief Secretaries, Labor Secretary Arti Ahuja emphasized the need to issue directions to employers, construction companies and industries to undertake necessary steps to mitigate adverse effects of extreme hot weather. The Labor Secretary referred to the seasonal outlook issued by India Meteorological Department for hot weather season during the current year, which indicates above normal maximum temperatures over most parts of northeast India, east and central India, and some part of northwest India. The letter lists out various strategic steps required to be taken, which include rescheduling of working hours for employees and workers, ensuring adequate drinking water facilities at workplaces, making provision for emergency ice packs and heat illness prevention, material to construction workers and coordinating with health department to ensure regular health checkup of the workers. In Sudan, at least 185 people have been killed and 1,800 injured in three days of fighting between rival factions in the state. The overall death toll could be much higher because clashes in Khartoum have prevented the removal of bodies in some areas. 
The outbreak of violence over the weekend has trapped millions of people in their homes while supplies are running low in several areas. The regular army and the rival paramilitary rapid support forces, RSF, issued statements accusing one another of violating the ceasefire. The army's top command stated that operations to secure the capital and other districts would continue. India has set up a control room to assist its citizens in Sudan in view of the current situation in that country. The control room set up by the External Affairs Ministry will provide information and assistance to Indian citizens. The 24 into 7 toll-free helpline numbers are 18 and 9111-2301-2114 The email is situationroom at mea.gov.in External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar has criticized former Karnataka Chief Minister Siddha Ramaya for allegedly politicizing the situation of Indian nationals and persons of Indian origin PIO in conflict-ridden Sudan. Replying to a tweet by Mr. Siddha Ramaya in which he urged the government to ensure safety of 31 people from Karnataka stranded in Sudan, Dr. Jayashankar said that due to security reasons, their details and locations cannot be made public. The minister assured that the Indian embassy in Khartoum is continuously monitoring and staying in touch with Indian nationals and PIOs in the war-hit country. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has met with Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan in Damascus. Syrian state media reported that Mr. bin Farhan reached the Syrian capital Damascus yesterday. This is the first visit by a Saudi official to Syria's capital since the start of the country's civil war in 2011. The Saudi Foreign Ministry in a statement said that the visit showed the kingdom's desire to find a political solution to Syria's conflict that would preserve the country's Arab identity and return it to its Arab surroundings. The trip comes less than a week after Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Meghdad visited Saudi Arabia also on the first such visit since the conflict began. In IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 14 runs at the Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium in Hyderabad last night. Batting first, Mumbai Indians scored 192, losing 5 wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. Today, Rajasthan Royals will meet Lucknow Super Giants at the Savai Mansingh Stadium in Jaipur. The match will start at 7.30 this evening. And now for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Anita Anand. Thank you, Abhishek. BJP is planning massive Modi Breach Creek in Karnataka in the next few weeks, writes the Asian Age. Modi planning Karnataka Breach with 25 rallies across state, reads the paper. Supreme Court overrules government objection begins same-sex hearing, writes Hindustan Times. The Tribune under the caption, Apple logs in, carries a photograph of Apple CEO Tim Cook during the inauguration of the company's first Indian retail store in Mumbai. India's journey is going to be extraordinary and we are all in, says Apple CEO Cook, state's business line. India and Russia agree to deepen trade and economic relations, informs the Hindu. President Draupadi Murmu arrives in Shimla, inaugurates Tulip Garden, notes the Tribune. Financial Express quoting Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya on pandemic preparedness says, need to break cycle of panic. And finally, Staff Selection Commission exams now also in 13 regional languages. Well, the statement reports that in addition to Hindi and English, the question paper will be set in 13 regional languages. And with that, it's back to you, Abhishek. Thank you, Anita. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Home Minister Amit Shah directs fast-track construction of roads and fencing in border areas. Enforcement Directorate attaches assets worth over 11 crore rupees of Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram and others in INX media money laundering case. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to address Army Commanders Conference today. Research and Innovation Initiative Gathering Conference of G20 to begin at Dharmashala in Himachal Pradesh today. Death toll from clashes in Sudan soars to 185. India sets up control room to assist its citizens in view of the current situation. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 14 runs at the Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium in Hyderabad. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.